Ready for the word of God? Let's turn quickly. Second Kings chapter 5, chapter 6. So this month, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. And this will be the final teaching of the Holy Spirit. And um, what I want to talk about today is this. How do we receive help from the Holy Spirit in difficult situation? And difficult situation may matter. And let me say something quickly here. I think it's very painful to look down on another person's difficulty because it's not a difficulty. And it's, it, it's what we do. So you look at someone that wants to have a child. I'm like, what's the big deal about not having children? You don't even know what it feels like. You look like someone that wants to get married. Maybe it's a lady or a guy. I'm like, ah, why, are you so, why are you carrying it? What must you marry? You don't even know what it feels like. Maybe someone is trying to change a job or migrate or get a visa. And you say, visa, what is visa? You don't, you don't even know what it looks like because everybody knows where it pains them. Everybody knows where it hurts them. Everybody knows where they have the issues. And one of the things we have to learn as Christians is sensitivity. We need to be sensitive. You know, l- let me make you a confession. When I was a younger Christian, when people had divorce, I used to be like, oh my God, how can you divorce? You're so careless, you're so unspiritual. I've grown right now. I'm like, I don't know why you have divorce, but I respect you. And I'm not going to look down on you because you had a divorce. Because there's that thing that makes us so pseudo-spiritual, like we're so hyper-spiritual to people. So when we talk about tough season, seasons that are tough, it may not be tough to you, but it's tough to me. Some people have COVID and don't show symptoms. Some people have COVID and almost die. And some literally die from COVID. Because the impact is just different on different persons. So the question today is that no matter what the challenge is, how does the spirit bring about help when I have challenges? It may be as big as I need three million dollars to scale a business. I was talking to one of the people in NLP and he was telling me about this current need. This current need is the fact that they need two billion dollars. I'm like, wow, not two billion naira, two billion dollars. And the reason I was telling me was because right now they've gotten one billion dollars. So it was a testimony. He said, I went to talk to someone and the guy said, I can partner with you. He said, how much do you want? He took a paper. He said, write how much you want me to give you. Because the guy was so shy. He couldn't believe he could ask someone for that. And he wrote 250 million. And the guy said, okay, I'll give you that. And as he was going, he said, but I know this will, not, this will not be all you need because it's a big project. This is an oil and gas project. He said, yes, actually, I need some more. He said, let me call a friend of mine. How much do you want to give you? I called the friend. The guy said, I'll give another 500 million dollars. And by the time he was talking to me, he said, Pastor B, it's not I will give. They transfer the money. So, when you hear that kind of testimony and all you're believing God for is 500k, then you wonder like, God, will you help me not to disturb you so I can pay more attention to other people that have big problems? Because you're just wondering that. <laughs> I don't even need millions of dollars. Just one, one, one k dollars. That's all I need. And when you think that, that that's tough, you know, some people, some people, are, some, people some lady says, I don't want anything. I just want good health. Some guy says, I just want good health for myself, for my parents, for my children, and for my spouse. That's all I need. I mean, what is good health? And some of the people say, it's more than good health I want. I, I just want someone to spend my life with. Everybody wakes up and have this little cuddle all over. And would, he said, when I wake up, all I get to cuddle is a pillow. I want a human being that has blood in his veins to be able to cuddle me and say how are you this morning and someone says what is that (laughs) because for somebody else i want a job that pays me more someone says when i have a job that pays me more i'll feel cuddled i'm only saying that the problems will always be different but it doesn't reduce the intensity of the problem do you get what i'm saying today Because our God is so good, God knows how to touch different people at their different points of need. He doesn't replace your answer with somebody else's answer. But how does the Spirit... Look at the last girl that testified. He was something about admission. And when she said that testimony to some people, like, oh yeah, 
But to her, she knew how deep it was for her. Some people just need God to walk on their body and take out the fiber. Some people just need God to walk on their business and expand it. Let them make their first 10 million on her. Some people just need God to walk on their body and heal their kidney and heal their liver. Some God needs God to just walk because the family is in crisis. Some people just need God to walk on their son, on their daughter, on their grandchild. So the question this morning is this. How does the Spirit bring us help? Because the Spirit can bring us help. But if you don't know how help comes, you may not know how to receive the help of the Spirit. It's not as though the Spirit is not bringing you help. Only that you don't know how to receive the help of the Spirit. So let's go into the Bible. Let's look at 2 Kings chapter 6. How to receive the help of the Spirit in tough situations. And I want to say something to you. Every time you go through a tough situation, it's part of the human life. Stop blaming yourself. People go through marriages and they'll be like, oh my God. They blame themselves for everything. Some things is just human life. Some things is just because we're Nigerians with Nigerian passport. Praise God. But what I know is that God has a purpose. God has a plan. Bigger than your problems. Bigger than the pain. Bigger than the pressure. If you can hold through, you will come out with a testimony. Today, this evening, I'm going to do an interview with Sinatra at 8 p.m. And that's because I know Sinatra personally. And she, you know, she's part of a lot of things that we do here in church. And she just has amazing stories of what God has done for her. And on Tuesday, I'm going to do another testimony of a, of a family in our church that couldn't have a child for six years. And now they have twins. And the reason I'm saying this to you is because I know the journey. I know what it means to lose your money in business. Because I've lost some money before. I know what it means to have a struggling marriage. Because mine has struggled before. I know what it means to be praying for something. And it seems as if my prayer is falling on deaf ears. And you now get to a point and say, why does God answer that post prayer? And it's not actually my own. Mine is even worse because I'm praying for people and they are coming with testimony. And I say, God, I receive. I have a, I have a short letter apartment and I've been praying that I will have these customers that will come and, you know, take the apartment. The lady sent me a testimony. and said, Pastor Balaji, when you prayed for the miracles, I got a customer that paid me in dollars, took my pardon for one year. I said, Lord, that is my testimony you gave somebody else. Remember me, O oh Lord. But one thing that never changes is this. In every season, not depending, not depending on circumstance situation, God is good and kind. See, I, 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 that's what I've told myself. In every season, the goodness of God does not depend on outcome. The goodness of God depends on this person's. So nothing is going to convince me otherwise that God is not good. In good time, God is good. In bad time, God is good. In daytime, God is good. In evening, God is good. God is always good. And that's where I live my life from. That God is always good. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how does God send us help in difficult times? One of the things that God does is this. The Bible says the Lord is my very present help in time of trouble. So God is our help himself. So God does not just send us help. God himself is help. So when the Holy Ghost came, the Holy Ghost became our helper. But the Holy Ghost did not just become our helper. The Holy Ghost brought with him what we call gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit is God help to his children. Okay, where's my bag? Let me show you. Where's my bag? You need to give that to Brother Shmurafa because I need someone that is... You know, but remember, you don't even look, yeah, um, yeah, but how, yeah. And this one that is apostolic. So, this is what this looks like. This is Father God. This is me, Christian. Come, Father God. Father God comes to me and gives me the Holy Spirit. He gives me a gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God. Now I have the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is God's help to me. The Holy Spirit is God's help to me. The, the thing is this the gift of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, contains other gifts the gift of the holy spirit is the gift that contains other gifts so now i have the holy ghost given to me by father god but inside the gift of the holy ghost there are what other gifts like what the gift of the spirit i have this gift called the word of knowledge i have this gift called what the word of wisdom i have this gift called what the gift of prophecy 
I have this other gift. This other gift is called what? This other gift is called um, the sending of spirits. I have this other gift. This other gift is even multi. <clears throat> I have this other gift that has all other things in it. You know, and it's a gift of faith. So when the Holy Ghost comes into your life, it's a gift that what contains what? Other gifts. So how does God help us? God helps us by giving us the Holy Ghost that contains other help. See, let me say something to you quickly. And this is going to catch fire here. There are problems you're going to have in life that English cannot solve. There are problems in life that logic cannot solve. And there are some that logic can solve. But the time they will use to solve it, you don't have it. And you will need some help. And it's so bad that the people in our world today, they are looking for help. And all over the world, people are looking to the wrong source. All of a sudden, you have what I call rebranded witchcraft and rebranded wizards. You know what they call them online? They call them mystics. That's what they call them, mystics. What, 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 what? Psychics, sorry. Psychics. So when you go online now, someone says, I'm a psychic. They are not, there's nothing like psychic. They are Mr. Lawo, Mrs. Lawo, Baba Lawo, Iya Lawo, Sangomas. That's what they do. They are worshippers of Satan. They practice demonic divination. Yes, sir. But why do people go there? Because people want solution. You have girls that want to marry. They want to marry. So they are going to someone in Dubai to buy cock. To buy cock that when they eat to attract men. You know what I'm talking about? Christians are buying cock. They say, this cock, when you eat it, this fowl, if I cook it and eat it, you mix it like this, it will attract men. It will make your husband, I don't give you money, give you money. This one will bring you contract. And Christians are falling for it. The reason why is that they have needs. And somehow, we Christians have positioned ourselves in such a way as though God cannot do it. So they are looking for help every other place. Do you know that when you go something on Google, there's this bracelet that they sell on Google that they say things like, you know, it was soaked in, in Japan and it, this person wore it and had good luck and that person wore it and had a husband and this person wore it and when they misplaced it, all their life went downstairs and they say, if you just order, they will send you this thing because you see, these are not just bracelets. It's a bracelet. It's not a bracelet. It's vampire. That's the Yoruba word for that demonic charm. The Yorubas normally will wear it under their gown. Those things are immersed in very demonic powers. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And why do you think that's too far? What about recently people are cutting soap? So you have a generation of people that take in the supernatural negative, take it to their jobs. When you walk in public offices, when I talk with high court public officials, you can see they live in fear. They're always looking for a prophet to pray for them because the kind of charm they throw at themselves. The kind of charm they throw at themselves. The question is that what is the help of the Christian? All of a sudden, even entertainers, I've heard that singers now put incision on their tongue so that when they sing, people will start dancing by demonic influence. The world has gotten so bad. So terrible. People are putting marks on other people's seats. So their seats can be vacant. So the question is, my, see, my, my, I only said all of that to help you understand that the negative supernatural is real. Let me give you my personal story. And this story is for my father's best friend. When my father died, my father's best friend, I became kind of close to him. And um, when I went to see him, he died this year. He died this year, I think at 90. And uh, he said, ah, pastor. Ah, before we came on again, we tried things. Ah, we tried, we tried, we tried, we tried. He and my father had school in London and came back. When my father served in the police force, he had served in one of the biggest, Niger biggest firms, international firms in Nigeria. And he wanted to become the MD when their MD left. But they brought another white guy from Europe to become the MD of the company. So he was number two still, and he didn't like it. He told me himself, not that he said, he said, ah! He said, thank God though, that things have changed now. He said, those days, when I leave work on Friday, he said, I take a plane straight to Senegal. He said, I go and see herbalists that don't see the sun. 
He said they never step out of their house. He said, these are people that for 10 years they have not seen sun before. He said, I will leave on Friday. I will get there. I, I will come back to Nigeria on Monday. He said, I did it for four months. Every weekend I was going. I couldn't miss it. He said, the white man they posted. He said, the day he left the office, nobody knew. He just packed his load. It was when he got back to Spain. He said, what am I doing here? I said, but thank God that we have known Christ. We can't be doing all that again. See, see, so I'm really saying, I'm really saying that the, the spiritual help. So, the question is that, how many of you have seen, uh, are there fake Gucci bags, yes or no? Yes. Are there fake Gucci to turn back, yes or no? The reason why they are fake is because there's what? There is an original. So the reason why there are all these small, small people that say, I will give you power and you get husband. I will give you something, you get a business. I will give you, you get promotion. It's because there's real power somewhere. And that power is not with the occult. That power is in the Holy Ghost. This is how Jesus said it. He said, all power belongs unto God. Hallelujah. He that they be thrones of judgment. They all submit to the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're talking about today. That power in the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Wherever you are, God's power can touch you. Whatever the need is, God's power can touch you. I want to challenge you. We need to be a generation of Christians that even though we wear t-shirts and speak nice English, we carry power. Oh, no, 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 no. Because there are two generations of Christians. You know, they're Christians like, you know, you know, um, you know uh, yeah, I'm a Christian, but yeah, you know, like all those kind of deep things, you know. I don't feel it. I just kind of worship Jesus and lift up my hands. Listen, I understand the concept, but we need to know that even though we look simple, we look contemporary, we look very, you know, very contemporary, when you touch us, you know there's power inside. Hey, because the look, power is not in the look, it's in deposits. Glory to God. So, 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 so they take you and as a girl, you're like, oh, uh, uh. When they want a message, you just say, in the, in the name, your eyes will just switch. <laughs> they say, hey, what happened, Liquida? You said that this is power talk now. Uh, this, this is not a matter of smash. This is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How do we receive the help of the Spirit? And you know, when I talk about this, what annoys me the most is when the business people in church always feel like, oh, okay, this is all like all for the pastors because we're business people what do we need all of this for there's a reason why people join illuminati there's a reason why they join Ogoni. there's a reason why because when you find wealth the next thing you want is power because it takes power to protect your wealth there's a reason why my father was in a freemason and he told me he said just the way nigeria is when you get somewhere you have to join something. Second Kings chapter 6. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Oh, lift up your hands and say, Lord, grant me an encounter today. Oh, my God. Everybody lift up your hands and say, Lord, grant me an encounter. Take your minute and pray. Take a minute and pray. MP3, get a microphone. Lead us in prayers for just one minute. Just take a minute and pray. Oh, let me hear you lead some fire prayer this morning. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh, Lord, grant me an encounter today. Grant me an encounter today. Grant me. Don't let me go back the same way I came. Ah. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, 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 yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can have your seat. I just want to cheer you. Can you bring those two chairs for me? This is the principle of physics. One talk about physics first. Let's talk about physics. Just bring those two chairs for me. Put those two chairs here. Let's talk about physics first. Just put those chairs here. Let them face like, like this. Yeah. Yeah, good. This physics, this is what physics says. And you can dispute it. This is what physics. You have to go and see Isaac. Physics says a body will remain in a state of rest until what? Until what? An external force is applied to it. Some things don't move until power moves it. 
That's what I'm going to. So, it says, it says a body. You can go back. Thank you, sir. It says a body would have been in. The single lady would remain single. The barren man would remain barren. The barren career would remain barren. The struggling man would remain struggling. Until what? External force is what? Applied. So, it takes power to change location. It takes power to change status. He said, power moves it. So, this person moves from delay to accelerated. We didn't see the power, but we saw the result. Uh, somebody said, we need to see it. Are you here? Oh, yes. Let's go. Second Kings chapter 6. Because what I want to teach you today is this. There are Christians that don't know the power. There are Christians that, that subcontract power activity. You know what, what I mean? They look for somebody that can pray for them. That, don't be that kind of Christian. Be the one that, when you need to move something, you don't have to call somebody. You can say, hey, this thing, I got the power. I know how it works. And move it yourself. Move it yourself. Hallelujah. Move it from lack and move it to prosperity. Move it. Move it from single and move it to married. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it from barren and move it to fruitful. Having children. Move it from no job to having multiple contracts. Move it. Move it. Look at anyone and say move it. Most people don't want to move it. They want to get someone to move it. What you don't know is that, can the person move it for you? So the question today is this. How can you get the spirit help? How can you get the help of the spirit? Second Kings chapter 6. Hallelujah. Let me get it up. All business people, if there's a scripture you have to write down, you have to write this one down. And follow greatly. Because I'm talking about how the, the weapons we have. Sometimes you see single girls that want to marry. They say, we want to marry. Ah, so next thing they start exposing all their body parts because that's their weapon of attacking us, man. So the born again says, What should I do? He said, You just see, sometimes you say, Why are you dressed like this? Ah, Pastor, I'm single. Oh, I have to expose everything to catch somebody. The weapons of our warfare are not kana. Ah, they can expose all the things they have, they can sleep with everybody to get the contract. But we have our own methodology. We have our own culture. We have our own values. We have our own systems. That's what we're talking about today. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 6 verse 8. The Bible says that the king of Syria. Just a minute. Um, the people in, in streaming. I wanted to stream this service. But maybe afterwards you can do it. Just make sure you have it. And the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such a such place shall be my camp. So Syria and Israel were warring. So they were like two competing companies. And Syria had the upper hand. They had more strategic advantage. And they would lay out their plans. And all of a sudden, the Bible says this. The Bible says this. Verse 9. And the man of God was sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for either at the Syrians come now. And the king of Israel sent unto the place which the man of God told him and warned him off. The Bible says, Because he heeded to this help, he saved himself not once and not twice. It became a pattern. God knew that Israel could not help themselves. He knew. That Israel could not save themselves. He knew that Israel could not win the battle by themselves. So God began to send them help. How did God send them help? God sent them help through prophecy. Prophecy and the word of what? Knowledge. All of a sudden, Elisha would be in his house. And he would know what they are discussing. How did he know? Angels will carry secret information from Syria. Will transfer it to Elijah. And Elisha will say, because of that, this and this and this is what you must do. And because of that information, they were saved not one time, not two times, not three times, not four times. Look at what the king of Syria said. 
And the Bible says in verse, <laughs> the Bible says in verse 11, and the, therefore the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing. And he called his servant and said unto him, Will you not show me which of you is for the king of Israel? He said, This is ridiculous. How can we plan a marketing strategy? How can we plan how to take that contract? And all of a sudden, they work against us as if they know what we're talking about. He says, I'm tired. If this is one time, it's coincidence. If this is twice, it's coincidence. But this is a regular occurrence. He says, Show me who is for me and see what the servant of the king said. Because the king th thought they had a spy, they had a snitch. But see what the king said. He said this. <laughs> and when, oh glory to God, and one of the servants of the king, for Saul said, Not my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel. What did he say? He said, He telleth the king of Israel the words that speaketh in his bedchamber. Ah, what is this thing called? This thing we call here is one of the gifts of the Spirit. What is it? It's the gift of the word of knowledge. Where you know things not because you know them. The Spirit of God will tell them to you. You are dating this guy. The guy already told you. Everybody my mother has met. Cancel, 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 cancel. He said, now I'm born again. He said, even the last two ones were Dickens. He said, cancel them. As she went to pray. Father, I'm going to meet the mother-in-law. And God tells you. When you get there, don't kneel down first. Say this. Mommy. I just want to let you know your daughter has returned and you don't know what that means and you go there you say it and knelt down and when you say it and knelt down she just said crying she said the reason i've rejected all the girlfriend my son has brought was because i'm looking for someone that will embrace me as their mother because before i had him there was a girl i had that died at birth and it had been my biggest regret how would even the guy does not know how did you know the guy looks at you and says, how did you know this? Ah, these things are not revealed to flesh and blood. Ah. This is how we have, this is our advantage. Why? This is our advantage. You are running the business and they say that in that business, ah, they say the who and who is there. That this person knows the governor, this one knows this, this one knows that. And you look at, who do you know? You say, all I know is the Holy Ghost. And as you are presenting, the Lord tells you that as you go there, every other person is presenting on this. And God tells you that when you're making your presentation, emphasize power saving in the conversation. And as, as you all of a sudden, you just went on power saving. If we do this, we'll call budget here, we'll say power here, we'll be this here. All for you to hear that yesterday there was a policy release from international office in Europe that power saving is a priority in all their projects. And every company that cannot achieve it will be cancelled. So, and they're wondering that, but this policy came yesterday as at 5 p.m. Nobody knew until this morning that when we saw the mail, we could not inform all our contacts. But you are addressing it because the Holy Ghost knows what they will need. He prepares you personally to it. When businessmen understand the things will change. I'm telling you, the Bible says, as the king of Syria is planning in his house, <laughs> as he's planning in his house, what is happening? <laughs> they, they are telling themselves, Elijah said, when you have this kind of gift, crypto will not suffer again. You will just come and tell and say, ladies and gentlemen, Ethereum is going to this amount. In two months' time, it will fall. Ah, when we are proven you, we will all just take position. <laughs> we will just come to judge and say, ladies and gentlemen, they say what to buy now is Dogecoin. And, <laughs> and VRP. <laughs> and V. <laughs> we just all position and buy. They say, how do we know? Because the gift is tested. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. Why does God give? So let me begin to round this up. So why does God give supernatural gifts like this? Why does God give? Number one, to deepen conviction. You know, hey, <laughs> to deepen conviction. God says there are some things I do. Let's look at First Corinthians chapter two quickly. First Corinthians chapter two, verse. Verse 4. Paul said, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
Paul says that although I talk grammar, he said, what I want is not grammar. He said, because of his grammar, you will soon meet a professor that will logically argue with historical facts, with information, how what you believe is not so. Ah, but when you heard that your own deaf ear opened, you will tell the man, I don't have data to prove something, but this year was deaf. How did he open? One of our members in Bagada, and some of you will remember, the child was born with an eye defect. At the age of three, he was using glasses that was as thick as the bottom of the old Coke bottle. And the doctor had said, his eyes will keep getting bad until he goes blind. One of the healing services, we prayed for him. Eyes got healed. You know, this is about eight years ago. I, I, recently, I, I, on my birthday, did a video. And he said, Pastor Bolaji, since that healing, one of my biggest desires is to become a pastor. So I can also help other people. How did he come to a place of that deep conviction? It was not what he was taught. It was what he handled. Hallelujah. There's something about you, the gift of the Spirit, that it deepens conviction. Someone said the gift of the Spirit deepens conviction. The gift of the Spirit deepens conviction. When I go through tough times, eh, I will just tell myself, Ah, he has not failed before. He will not fail now. It will be tough. I will come out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I might cry, but now I will cry and come out. The reason why is that I've been to you, I've been here before. It's not what the pastor said, it's what I've handled. It's what I've tasted. That's why Peter said, We have tasted and handled of the word of life. Not what we were. We've tasted it, sir. When you have conviction, you have conviction. There's no amount of Satan that can make me afraid. If you like Satan himself appear here, no, I can't be afraid. Never. Because I've tasted the raw power of the spirits. When I was young, I was afraid of darkness. If they take light, you will just be looking for light. Me? I can't sleep in darkness. Nothing. Let anything. I will devoid. Hey. The Bible says that the lion walks on the path and turns for no order. I am of the land of the tribe of Judah. Yes. I turn for no order. Yes. You walk in the company, they say, we'll deal with you. You say, deal with me. You say, for saying that, apologize. Because if the angels hear you, I will not stop them. Before I know, they will deal with you. Why? No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me shall be condemned to judgment. They say, COVID is killing everybody. I said, not me. Ah, not me. He says, with long life will I satisfy them. The person that said so is not a doctor. It was God that said so. Don't, say, don't talk like that. Oh. If you don't know what to say, keep quiet. <laughs> believe what I respect what you believe. You believe. I believe what I believe. Hallelujah. Just standing on this word. Hallelujah. What do the gifts of the Spirit do? They bring conviction. The second thing the gift of the Spirit do is this. First Corinthians 14. Are you here? Oh, you so are you here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lady in the microphone, you're gonna help me break my voice by reducing my volume eventually because you can see that I'm losing it gradually. Yeah. So the sun people at the back, you may need to help me with the front so that I don't lose my voice eventually. First Corinthians chapter 14. What does the gift of the spirit do? <laughs> verse 24 look at what it says it says if you all prophesy and there come in one that believes not or one that is unlearned someone that is not born again someone that is a free thinker is a you know it just believes and flows he says what will happen he says this person if you all prophesy and there comes in one that believes not or one that is unlearned. So there's one that believes not. Then there's one that is unlearned. He believes but he does not know spiritual things. The Bible says this. The Bible says, what does it say? The Bible says, number one, what happens to him is this. He is convinced of all and is judge of all. How does, how is he convinced? See what the Bible says in verse 25. For thus, at the secret of his heart made manifest and so falling down on his face the bible says he goes hey ah 
He hears what he has not heard before. They are church and they are church. Too. There's a place you go to, you feel good. I feel all right. I feel all right. I feel all right. But when you get to a place where they're spiritual, you say, Brother on the fourth row, John Agbaje, you are age 44. You used, when you were young, you fell at the age of five and broke your right hand. That's why that hand has a stitch. The guy looks, where am I? Where did I come to? Let me give you a testimony. When I was younger, one of my friends, because I had this group of Holy Ghost friends when I was very young. Thieves came to address them. Father, mother, everybody, prostrate on the floor begging. And the thief, as the body that we're robbing, he can jump a little, so just for God's feedback. As we're robbing, the guy, the guy was just maybe 15, between 15 and 18, there about. That was our age group then. He just lit over there, he said, Sir, to the thief. He said, But this is your sister that has leukemia. How will she be healed? The thief said, And of course, the thief said, Max, who are you? He said, No, sir. Because this morning, when you were having the meeting with the four others, the one that stayed back, he knew why he stayed back. And he began to talk to him. And you, the purpose of this theft is that when you get this money, you want to travel to Abidjan. And from Abidjan, you want to move to Europe. The guy said, who are you? He said, I'm a prophet. The thief said, we came to the wrong house. He called the other thieves. He said, all of you kneel down. He said, pray for us. The father and mother were still prostrating. He prayed for them. They apologized and went to another place. Glory to God. What I'm saying is this. There are certain results you have that wipes out insults. And it's not by saying, and it's not saying, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. He's not shaking, no. See, there's a way you talk in the office that you have a proven record that once you talk, they know that's the way. The day you want to resign, the MD will call and say, please come. Why do you want to go? Ah, well, we're just playing now. Ah, what, what, what has caused going right now? Because they know the impute you bring is more than logic. They're spiritual imputes. This is what we call spiritual intelligence. The challenge is that most people, most business people, they never, they, in their mind, God is not even in all those business things. God is not even all those things. God is not even all those things. So when you talk about the Holy Ghost and his power, eh, let them just be falling down. That's all it is. But the Holy Ghost will be limited to what it is. Let me give you two, two stories. I, I don't know. Um, during the NLP on Thursday, you know, on Thursday, NLP. Listen to me. Whatever you do, don't miss NLP this weekend. Is that okay? Yes, because fasting starts on Wednesday and tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And it's going to be really powerful. And invite your friends. So on Thursday, as we're praying, I finished praying. I just said, this brother come. And the guy came. I said, I see that it's a funding issue that you have. And I said to speak to him. The guy said, hey. You, you could see him like, hey. Hi. I said, what's the problem? He said, I'm into oil and gas. It's the last week, our major sponsor, the funding person, pulled out. He said, because it's very risky for him in Nigeria. And he pulled out. He said, and that has been the biggest problem for us right now. He said, I'm wondering, this is my first time here. I don't know anybody in this church. I don't even know who knows this. How did you know? I said, that's what the Spirit does. I read about a man in the U.S., minister of God. He was traveling and God says, buy that land. He said, I don't need land. God says, buy it. He bought it. Three to six months after he bought the land, they found oil there. He, they bought it back for him a hundred times what he bought the land for. This is what we call gift of the Spirit. See, it's, we can shake. Shaking is okay. But after you shake, what next? You are going to church. The Holy Ghost says, make sure you wear white and red. You say, why? Because the guy, he wants to notice you. What me notice is white and red. As you just go with white and red, the guy says, excuse me, your friend would ah, what's so spectacular about you that it was you he saw? We that were size 8 and size 6, he didn't see us. Because the guy is not looking for size 6 and size 6, he's looking for what? White and red. Are you listening to me today? One of my close friends, the Lord told him, this was before GSM case in Nigeria. God told him, leave where you are, go to a foreign land and go and learn about mobile technology. 
He went. It was not favorable. Two years after, two or three years after he has learned, by the time GSM came in, they were looking for local GSM engineers. But nobody was here because we had never had it. So they had to import people or take people and send them abroad. By the time he came, they offered him a mega pay because they were like, how did you train for this? What was on your mind? It was the spirit of God preparing him ahead of time. That was what Joseph had. Joseph, let me tell you, Joseph said, listen to me, famine will come. But this is the way you do famine. You will save right now for the famine to come. These are very strong spiritual concepts that are managerial in approach. But the major thing is this. Many of you are, you, are, you don't know what your weapons of warfare are. I know you spend time in meeting, but we have our own weapons. We have our gift, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the sign of spirit. The leaders will tell you, there was someone in this church that was stealing. One day, I was just praying. And the person was, if you count the four closest people to me, he's one of them. So, in my mind, I couldn't even believe he was stealing. I just remember, and God said, he's stealing. I said, no, that's my head. How can he be stealing? Ah, uh, this guy is, this guy has three passports. So, uh, I said, no, no, no. He's stealing. I just told my wife, I said, ah, I'm hearing he's stealing. I said, but why would he steal? He has a great job. I didn't know he was packaging us. That he didn't have a job at all. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time we investigated, I, one of the last said, Pastor, I didn't know he was stealing. I said, spiritual perception. I said, spiritual perception. I said, I just saw a new spiritual gift. You will just go somewhere and say, that should be a partner in my business. How do you know spiritual gifts? It might be five years. But the thing is that most of us don't know our spiritual gifts. We still want to be operating like them. So they sleep around to get contracts. Let's sleep around. They have what they use. We have what we use. When you submit your contract, wake up at night. Your wife says, What's happening? You said that warfare is a takasha. It can never, never fail. You go into Thanksgiving. All the girls are wearing this skipping dress when they go to party. Hey, 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 hey. see me. Oh, hey. you know what? You are just, you know, You're like, no, no, let them keep wearing skipping dress. It's not skipping dress that brings us back. Skipping dress means skipping us back. <laughs> let, 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 let's get our own desire. You, 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 you say, I'm believing God. You take one dangerous seat. You say, Father, I lay it on the altar. You say, are you mad? You say, I know what I'm doing. We're well, fasting and praying from, some, from Wednesday now. Someone say, I can't fast. I know you can't fast, but you can run around. You keep running. Ah, you keep running. They say, there's one sickness. This and this and this. You say, I know what to do. One time my wife woke up. I said, what's happening? You've not been sleeping. I said, I'm dealing with something. Because sometimes you can't even talk too much. You can't even talk what you're dealing with. I'm dealing with something. You take whatever you can use to worship. Ah! When God arrives, all his enemies, let's pray.